Okay, so we're uh, going to get started with exercise 208. And last class, we explored the idea of creating a block and then reusing it over and over again. And so going forward today, we're going to create a block that you could theoretically use over and over again. And um, the real purpose today is for me to depart from the very scripted, this is what you're going to make and let you have a little bit more freedom where you're trying to make something that you're choosing, but you have to figure out how to get there. So what are the steps involved in getting there? We will, we will evolve this over time, so you'll get more and more complicated objects as, as we go forward. But for right now, we're going to start by making some kind of, and I, I call this a building component, but like a window, a door, something that would go in a window that could be reused over and over again. Um, and so. If you want to completely make it up from scratch, I get that. But if you want to, it might be better to start from maybe one of the major window manufacturers or door manufacturers and build something that exists. So you're not having to actually make any design decisions. You're just trying to recreate an object that you could theoretically use. Um, and so if you went to any of the, the major design uh, websites, so Milgard would be one, Geldwin, I mean, you know, Anderson Windows. I mean, you've heard of these kinds of companies before. Uh, the key is, and I just did a Google search, but it obviously took me to something more than just the plain website here. The key is you're, you're looking for something like for pros or for architects or something along those lines, and you want to make sure that you get out of the consumer uh, website and into the, the pro website, which will give you more technical information. So if we come down here into the architects, we can look under product specs, find drawings, 3D models, and, and that sort of thing. So that's a, good, that's a good place to start. And so then we say, OK, I want uh, an AutoCAD drawing. Notice that we have Revit and we have SketchUp, but we don't have Rhino, unfortunately. SketchUp may work. We may be able to import a file that's a SketchUp file into Rhino. So you might be able to work your way around it. But for right now, we have to practice making it in the first place. So starting from an AutoCAD drawing might be a good place to, to go. So if, for example, um, let's see. I'm picking this at random right now. Let's do a casement. Sure, hinge screen. We'll see what that one looks like. OK, it did download as its AutoCAD file. I'm going to go ahead and say open, and it'll open in AutoCAD. Most of you have taken 135, so you're at least familiar with AutoCAD as an application. I just want to see what it looks like and see if it is kind of what I was after in the first place. Maybe. Let me go into model space and see what. OK, so all I'm really getting is technical details. None of this is, is particularly helpful for me. So I have to go back. And again, I'm doing this all live, so stuff doesn't always work the way I want. Uh, let's see here. No double hung. Files not found. How nice. All right, let's try a different manufacturer. Uh, OK, let's see here. For pros. And let's look. Sure. OK, we might have better luck here. So here's our casement and awning windows, or our double hung windows. I'll do a casement window for right now. And I can look here. We've got 2D elevation views. That could be good. 2D detail file, that could also be good. The 3D Revit file doesn't help us. So let's go ahead and try the 2D elevation view as a DWG. So we'll download that. Looks like it came in a zip file. So let's open that up. And let's open the casement. That's fine. I just want to take a look. All right. This is more what I was after. So this is giving us a bunch of styles of casement windows. 
obviously there's there's lots and lots and lots of them that that are made by this this particular company I'm going to use these as kind of a guide for building a window All right so it turns out that these these will work out just fine I'm going to close AutoCAD no I don't need to save it no I don't need to save that and let's go back into the world of Rhino. And so there's always method to my madness. The reason that I found an AutoCAD file is I want you to practice bringing an AutoCAD file in in the first place. So I have a brand new Rhino file. It is in inches. I'm going to go to File and then Import. And I'm going to choose from my Downloads folder, I hope, that casement drawing. I think this was it, wasn't it? We'll find out. And we'll go ahead. This is the AutoCAD DWG import. Basically, all the defaults are fine. We do want to make sure that my units match up, my AutoCAD units, to my Rhino units, which they do. And we'll go ahead and say OK. And if we look at this in the top view, of course, I picked the one with all the details on it. So we'll bring it in again. Let me go to File, and then Import. And let's see if I can pick the right one this time. And it was the elevations. There we go. Um, if you're not seeing the DWG file, you may have to specify AutoCAD DWG. The last time I imported something on this computer, it was a DWG, so it defaulted to that. But it may be, uh, for example, a 3D Studio, in which case you're not seeing it. So do look down here and make sure you pick AutoCAD DWG so we can pick the correct View. The defaults here are just fine, and we'll let those come in as well. So now if we were looking in the top view, we have all of the windows divided up here into various styles, and I also have some details that might be of reference to me down the road. All of this stuff is just clutter at this point. What I need to do is I need to pick which window do I want, and let's say that it's this one. Okay. And again, there's lots of windows. I'm not going to make all the windows. I'm just going to make one. So let's say I like that window. That sounds good. I do have some, some notices here. It's four foot six tall, and it's four foot eight wide. So I can make sure that my scale is correct. I'm going to type distance. And I want to make sure that, yes, this is four foot six. 54 inches would be four foot six, yes. Okay. If I'm doing that and that doesn't, and I don't want to, to change the, the dimensions in my head, I can click on units and switch to feet and inches, which will make life easier for me to specify. Ah, yeah, it's four foot eight. Easier to read. Okay, so there's the, the piece that I like. I like that window. That sounds good. I'm going to go ahead and move that window for right now up here. And then I'll take all of this stuff that I don't need and we'll just delete it. Maybe. Oh, how nice. There we go. So let's move this back to 0, 0. And then zoom selected so we're looking just down at that particular object. All right, so I'm going to use this as a backdrop to actually build out these windows. So I have the bulk of the information uh, without having to create it manually. So let's take these lines, and I'm going to switch into the perspective view, and I'm going to start to build this out. Let me zoom selected. There it is. And the first thing that I need is I need to obviously create a surface and to start working with the surface. But before I do that, I want to look at my layers. When AutoCAD came in, it brought a bunch of nasty layers with it. So we'll, we'll clean those up a little bit later. I'm going to start working on layer one, and I'm going to call this window. And I'll make a sub layer. Actually, you know what? I'm going to call it window. And this was a four, uh, seven, eight, it's width first, then height. Uh, four, six, four, eight, four, eight. just for reference. And then I'll do a sublayer for frame and a sublayer for glass and then maybe a sublayer for trim. And I'm going to start on the frame layer so that I can work from there. 
With the frame layer active, I'll go ahead and draw a rectangular surface that's as large as the window itself. And let's go ahead and switch from my wireframe mode into my shaded mode so that I can see, yes, there it is. Now I'm going to use a tool called Split to split this surface based on these lines. And so this is a really handy tool. So I have the surface. Let's go ahead and split. I can type split, or I can go under transform, and then, no, excuse me, edit, split. And what split is, is it's a lot like trim. The difference is trim gets rid of a piece. Split just says, divide it into two. So let's split it. And sometimes it's useful to, to do the splits in a slower fashion. So let's take those two. Let's take this, and let's take oops, that, not the surface. So oops, sorry. Split is the opposite of trim. And when I type split, I have to select the object first. So there's my surface, enter. Then my cutting objects would be this, 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 and this. So I'm only going to cut with those. I'll hit Enter. And when I do that, I now have separate surfaces, some that represent the glass, some that represent the frame, and some that represent the outermost frame. So once I have those established, we can go ahead and turn off all the excess layers here so that I have just the simple surfaces. <coughs> now I can go through and do some extrusions. If I wanted to be really precise, this would be the point in time where I could go back and reference those little details about how the window is made. Um, I'll do this just for your reference so you can see how this process would work, though in reality, you'll just make some approximations. So if I went back to import and I brought that, um, these were my details. And I turn the layers off. Hold on a second. There we go. Let me select these objects and let me move them out of the way. Come on. Apparently, Rhino doesn't like me today. That's just life. OK, so I went ahead and I moved those objects out of the way. Now, this is what I was talking about. So I could come in here and I could look at how some of these come together. E-series casement, there it is. This would be information about how the window actually works and what the profiles look like, et cetera. I could take this and move it over the top of this drawing and create the same kinds of profiles and, and that sort of thing. To me, that's too much work. We're going to do some approximations. OK, so let's take this outermost frame right there, and let's extrude. So extrude surface, extrude SRF. It would also be under uh, surface, sorry, solid extrude surface straight. I do want to make sure here, as I look through my options, both sides is set to no, solid is set to yes. Those are both important. <laughs> so let's go ahead and specify how thick this, this would be. So in this case, uh, I don't know, let's do it at maybe 3 inches. And I'll go ahead and hit Enter. So now we have that extrusion. Then we can go ahead and extrude these little pieces, which would be the, the frames of the windows themselves. <coughs> so I'll go ahead and extrude these, and this time, I'm going to maybe do it at, uh, I don't know, let's do an inch and a half or so. But I do want to point out one other thing. If I don't, if delete input is set to no, I'll keep my original surfaces. So in this case, I really don't want my original surfaces. I would have to go back and delete them anyway. So I'll go ahead and say delete input set to yes. And then we'll say this is maybe 1.5 inches. And then we also need to extrude these two pieces. And this would delete input yes, maybe 0.5. On the underside, I still had that original surface, so we'll get rid of that. But now I have the various pieces of this window created through a very simple extrusion. So let's, let's make some adjustments. Let's take the window frames here. Let's move them closer to the outside. Start at maybe the full outside, then move. V for vertical, I don't know, negative 
three seven five inches. So it's just down a little bit from the outermost frame there. Then let's take the glass and let's move the glass so that it would occur right in the center of that window. So you can see how relatively quickly I'm building out this window based on the AutoCAD drawing that I, that I got to begin with. So let's take it a step further. Let's go ahead and take this window. Let's rotate 3D. Oops. And let's rotate it along this axis. There. There. And let's fold it up so that it's in its 3D plane. Like that. Now we can see the inside and the outside of my window. So there it is. I might at this point want to add a little bit more detail to it. I certainly would want to apply some um, materials to it. Let me move so that this corner right there is at zero there. Now let's say, hmm, maybe it needs a little bit of trim. If I was imagining putting this into a window, maybe it needs a little bit of extra trim around it. So let's go ahead and create that. I'll start with a, um, a box. And we'll do a box like this. And I don't know, let's do maybe uh, five and a half inches. So it would be ultimately a two by six piece of trim. I didn't want to do the math to actually create this little box here. So I'm going to use, and a lot of you have asked for this before, uh, I want to be able to manipulate this just in one direction at a time, kind of like the push-pull tool does in SketchUp. I can do that by using the transform scale 1D, so I'm scaling in one direction. And we'll say that I want this thickness, so from there to there, this is where, see, I can adjust. I want that to be maybe an inch and a half. And let's move this so that it's right out there. And now I have the head of the piece of trim for my window. And in reality, let me scale it one more time. And I want it to be, oops, scale 1D, 1D. And I'm going to go from the center to right there. And I want this to be a little bit wider. And I might wait until I do the, the side trim. So let's leave it. I'll start with the side trim down here. I'll use a box this time. We'll go from that point. I'll say at 5.5 uh, .5 inches, comma, negative 1.5 inches. And we'll go up to right there. I'll mirror this across that point. I'm holding down. Ortho is not on for me. So if it's not on, I can hold down Shift and get it temporarily. There it is. Now I can scale this one. So let me scale 1D again. And we'll go from the middle to right there and pull that out. I did it from the middle so it would scale both sides at the same time save myself a little time like that. Now let's build a little, maybe a little windowsill underneath. So let's go from that corner to that corner. And we'll go down. It should be negative 1.5 inches. Little windowsill. Let's scale that 1D again. And instead of being 1.5, let's make it stick out a little bit more. Let's go 2.5. that. And then let me take this top piece of trim and we'll copy it. And we'll drop it right below the window like that. So you see I'm just starting to add levels of detail to this window. And this is one of the advantages of working in blocks is as I continue to change things. Like let's say I'm doing a design and I decide I really don't like 2 by 6 trim. I can come in and shrink all the trim and then it'll update on my final design. So this using it as a block becomes kind of important. So maybe I want a little bit more detail. Maybe I don't want these sharp edges anymore. Maybe I'll do a chamfer surface, which you guys have done before. A distance of, I don't know, let's do, let's try a quarter inch. And then I could chamfer this surface to that surface so I have a little edge on it. I'm having a little problem where those two connect there because of how I created this. So let's go ahead and undo, and I'll use split again across the corner. Now remember, I don't have to do all of the window 
at, at once. I can use mirrors once I create one part of the window. So always keep that in mind. So let me split this with this and with that. Oh, you know what? I have to explode it first. And then let's take this and split with this and this. And that gives me a separate little surface here, which I can then chamfer from there to there, and end up with that nice little beveled edge. So once I get the bulk of the detail down, then it's a matter of slowly adding progressive levels of detail. So I have the big shape first. Once that's established, then I go through and I add little things like the chamfers and that, that sort of stuff to really enhance what this window looks like. I might also decide that one of these windows would look better if it was open slightly. So let me go ahead and just do a regular rotate. And we'll start right here. And let's open that, I don't know, by, um, let's go 36. Oops, it should have been negative 36, sorry. Negative 36, there we go. And maybe that's part of the look that I'm going for in this particular window. So I'll continue adding progressive layers of detail to this particular piece. But before I'm finished, I do need to take some time and really make this ready to be used as a block. And so if I'm going to make it ready to be used as a block, I have to clean up my layers and I have to add materials and do the texture mapping for it. So we'll go ahead and we'll delete all of those pieces that I don't need. All right, those are gone. And now I have to go through and I have to clean these layers. And so, yes, I can select them and I can press the delete key, but in all likelihood, I'm going to get this. There's a block definition named blah, blah, blah on blah, blah, blah. Okay, this is what AutoCAD loves to do. And it won't let me delete all of the layers. So I have to go into Edit, Blocks, Block Manager. And we see that here's all this stuff that came in from AutoCAD. How nice, right? So I need to go through and I need to actually get rid of, by pressing Delete, all these extra things. Furthermore, the model has 447 hidden and no reference block definitions. Why? Right? We don't need that. But I need to show it. There we go. So let's go ahead and we have the first one select. Oh, not responding. Come on. There we go. First one selected. Let's come down here, select the last one. There we go. And then we'll press delete. Now, this would be a really good, before you do this, you should have gone to File Save, right? Because then everything's going to crash. So let's close this really quick. Let's go to File, Save. And we'll put this in 208. Click Save. Perfect. Now, we'll go back to that block thing. So we'll go to Block Manager. They're all showing. We'll click the first one, scroll down here, hold down Shift, select the last one, and then we'll press Delete. And we get some errors, of course, why not? Right? But eventually, we got through a lot of them. We'll see if we can get through and get rid of some of these other ones. There we go. And so through a progressive set of deletes, we've got rid of all those nasty blocks. Then we can come back and we can actually delete the AutoCAD layers. We can delete the non-window layer. We can delete the default layer. And now we have just the window, the frame, the glass, and the trim. So I separated this out into frame, glass, and trim because in all likelihood, those are the three things that are going to have materials on them. So we'll go ahead and look at these. Glass is fairly easy. So we're going to go ahead and go to my V-Ray materials. I'll click on the M. I'll go to Scene Materials, and I'm going to go ahead and load material. So I told you thus far we're staying away from glass. Today's the day we can break that. We're going to add glass. So I'm going to go into my 
flash drive here. I'm going to go into resources, V-Ray, V-Ray materials, glass, and I'm going to pick basic glass. There it is. And basic glass .vizmat, and I'll double click. That gives me basic glass. We can see it there. I want this to apply to the trim layer. So I'll right click on basic glass. I'll say apply material to layer. And it's going to be on the glass layer. Sorry, not the trim layer. It's going to be on the glass layer. There it is, glass, OK. Now I want this object and this object, which are the glass, to be on the glass layer as well. Change object layer. If I were to look at this in rendered mode, those would now appear clear like glass, which is good. It's really important to note a couple things. One, when we're working with glass, glass, the true glass material, we have to have two parallel surfaces next to each other. Glass in Rhino works differently than glass in other programs. Like in SketchUp, you take your, your surface, you apply glass to it, call it a day. Rhino and V-Ray, because of how light bends through glass and the reflections that occur in glass, it needs to have a thickness to it. And so if it was just a single pane of glass, like one of these really terrible windows, we would still have to model two surfaces. If we're modeling double pane glass, we can cheat a bit and just model the, the outside of one side and the inside of the other and call it a day. But V-Ray calculates the bend as it goes through the glass. So if glass was two surfaces and V-Ray looks at the light, it bends slightly as it goes through the glass and V-Ray calculates that. So if we only have one surface of glass and on the other side of our building we have another surface of glass, when V-Ray calculates the light going through and it bends, it will assume that the whole inside of your building is a solid piece of glass, like a block of glass. So we can't have that. So we need these shapes like this to render glass correctly. So both of those are now glass. This and this, oops, sorry, are going to be my frames. And I probably need to select all of that. Hold on a second. Hold down Shift. There's all of my frame minus this and this. There we go. This is all the frame of my window. So let's make sure it's on the frame layer, change object layer. And then I need the material for the frame. So I don't know what I want my glass to be made out or my material to be made out of. Let's go ahead and load maybe, I don't know, let's, for, for lack of something better, let's say it's a white window. So we'll load maybe white plastic. So I don't have listed white plastic. I'll load black plastic instead. Not that I want a black window, but I can come back because we talked about materials and change the color of the plastic from black to white. And now I'll get a white plastic. So it has a little shine to it. And let's rename it to be plastic white. I'll go ahead and say OK. Right click on white plastic and apply material to layer. It would be on the frame layer. And I'll say OK. And it's technically there, but it doesn't look that different. Now maybe for the trim, I want to load some wood. So let me right click and say load material. And I'll go to V-Ray materials. Let's go into wood. And I'm going to load the, the VG fur just because it has a good grain pattern for us to practice texture mapping. You can pick a different wood. That's fine. Let's go ahead and load that. I'm going to apply that to my trim layer. And I also need to make sure that the trim pieces are on the, the trim layer. So there they are. So as we said before, we have to think about how the material is applied to these pieces of trim. So the topmost one is actually pretty good by itself. But these pieces are running the wrong direction. So let me take this piece to start, and I'll go to my properties. I'll go to my texture mapping, just like last class. And I'll pick the shape that most closely resembles my object, which is a box. There it is. Bounding box is just fine. World is just fine. And yes, let's make it capped. And now let's do x equals y equals z, so I get a consistent pattern to it. Unfortunately, it's going the wrong direction. And so I need to manipulate it so that the grain is going in the correct direction. 
I have a couple different options. I can look at my UVW rotation and I can guess that maybe this lower value, which would be the Z uh, or the W, could be 90 and we'll see if it rotates. There you go, it, it did it. I don't, however, know if it rotated the side correctly. It looked like, as I look at it, it looks like it did, so that's good. Let's go ahead and lock the scale and let's change the scale to maybe be 2, eh, 2.5. I'm just increasing the wood grain. But this piece of wood would have a different wood grain than the top piece of wood. So I have this one already set. This one hasn't been done yet. The good news about texture mapping is I can copy one to the other. So if we click on the one that we, oh, I always forget which way this goes. The one that we want to have a new texture mapping on, we can click this match mapping and it'll say select source object. We can pick that as our source object and the mapping will match. So I've done the mapping for this, and I can copy it to that. Let's do the mapping for the top here. I'll do a box map, bounding box, world, yes. I had this at 2 point, what was it, 2.5. My rotation seems OK on that. x equals y equals z, there we go. And that looks, that looks pretty decent. I'll go ahead and copy that down here. So I'll click on the match mapping, and I'll match it. This one, I'll also match. So that now I have the trim set on all of those pieces. So I've done my texture mapping. I have my window the way I want it. Right? At this point, I'm going to go ahead and save this as an object that I could use later on. I haven't done lights. And I haven't done anything, um, uh, no infinite planes, nothing like that, because I want to use it as a block. So let's go ahead and go to File and then Save. And I now have this established. And it's, it's something that I can use and I can render. I'd like to give the people that might potentially want to use it a preview of what this actually looks like. Uh, and in order to do that, obviously, I have to create a render. If I create a render right now, the object will, will exist in a black world and not be that attractive. The alternative to that would be to go into my um, V-Ray options and simply switch under environment from black to white. Say OK. And now when I render it, it'll be in a white world. The only challenge here is the reflections and the shadows um, on the glass itself. So I'm OK. And maybe I'll adjust this so that we see it open a little bit more, maybe like that. And we could render and call it a day. I'm OK with this as an end result, as our sample image of what this looks like, even though you can't really see it that well. Okay, I'd rather have the glass used appropriately so that when we put it into a real scene and have reflections and that sort of thing, we could save it. So in terms of posting it, I would save this to my flash drive under today's folder. Oops. It would help if I went to the correct file. Wait. And let's, let me create a quick folder here. Uh, fall, uh, spring. Apparently, I need more sleep or something. And let's call this Anderson. window sample. And I'll go ahead and click Save. And so I have on my flash drive, I have the casement window. Let's make sure it's all in the same folder to be clean. I have the casement window geometry, the 3D model file. I have the sample file that shows me what it looks like. But if somebody was to, to take this window and to download it and need to use it, they might not have the materials. And the materials don't necessarily come through. So there's one last thing that I'm going to do as part of this. I'm going to click on my V-Ray material editor. And for every material that I use, I will right click on the material and I'll say pack material. And this will create a zip file of the material that I'm using so that somebody that would download it could use the same material that I used. 
And so I'll make sure that that goes to the same folder. There, it's going to go in here. It's called basic glass. I'll save. I'll do my white plastic impact material. And this collects everything that I would need that's part of this material so that I could use it. So all the reference files, the bump maps, the displacement maps, which we'll talk about in a little bit later, uh, it will collect all of that so that you can use it later on. So let me go ahead and pack this last material, and I'll click Save. So now, if I were to look at my flash drive, I have under today's folder, I have the sample, I have the casement window, that's the Rhino file. This is a Rhino backup file. I have the basic glass, the, pla the white plastic, and the wood trim. So I have all of those together. Before I upload it to today's website, I want to zip all of these together. So I'm going to select the first one, hold down control, select the second one, and then the three materials that I used. I will right click on it and say send to compressed zipped folder. And then we'll rename this Anderson Basement Window. And this keeps everything contained as a package for somebody to, to use later on. So when it comes to actually posting it, I go to New Post. And I would say this is an Anderson Casement Window. And I go ahead and upload. Let me go to Add Media, Upload Files, Select Files. And I would upload the zip file that I created. So there's the Anderson Casement zip file. I'll go ahead and open that. And then I'll insert it into the post. And when I insert it into the post, it's going to show up as a little link like that. So maybe I want to make this a little cleaner and say download um, window packet, including materials. And then we can put a little bullet point next to that. Make it look nice. You don't have to. Then I also need to set a featured image. So I'll scroll down to my featured image. And for this, I'm going to use the sample image that I did the rendering. There it is. And we'll say set featured image. And now I have that. Now the other thing is I'd like for people to be able to actually find it. So on the right side here, there's under uh, the various categories, there's something called Rhino Blocks. And so from here, we could actually go in and say, this is a window. It's a casement window. We can do the categories and that sort of thing. When I'm done, oh, we also need to make sure that this is set as Exercise 208. There we go. And I'll go ahead and click on Publish. Now, while that's publishing, I'll show you on the course website. Sorry. There's a whole section where people have uploaded these. So if you go to Resources and you go to Rhino Blocks Library, we can look through, and these are a bunch of things that people have already done. Fenestration is holes in the wall. And you can see these are windows and doors that people have made. And you could, just like you do in SketchUp, get something that you like, download it, and use it for later. <coughs> right? So there's lots and lots of them out there. Some are better than others. Depends on people's skill. You'll be contributing to this, and yours will show up there as well. Okay. The other thing to point out as part of this, this whole process is some companies will use Kohler, for example, makers of toilets and sinks and that sort of thing, uh, will provide more than just the AutoCAD file or more than just the Revit file. So here, under resources for that particular toilet, we have 2D CAD files. That's nice. But we also have 3D CAD files, DXF, DWG, 3D Studio, and OBJ. OBJ is probably the most universal file format in 3D that we can download. So you can actually choose to download the OBJ or the 3D Studio. I already did it here. 
Oh, it's not going to let me open it there. Um, what is it? 3753. So let's go into Rhino here, create a really quick new Rhino file. And I'll go to File, Import. And it's not an AutoCAD drawing. Let's just do all compatible files. And uh, there is the 3753. Let's go ahead and open that. Import OBJ, that's groups is fine, that's good. We'll go ahead and say OK. And aside from the fact that it imported on its side, you rotate 3D. We can look at this and say thank you Kohler for providing us with a complicated object that we wouldn't want to have to build ourselves. So this is, for today, cheating. Right? Furthermore, for your assignment with the, the furniture, like I know, I know you guys would never do this anyway, but flying architecture, for example, has a bunch of furniture that you can download, some of which is paid, some of which isn't. Believe it or not, I've scrolled through this and I've seen these. And if you try to submit one of these as your table and chair, I'll know about it. Okay, so don't do that. Make your own, that's the point. But it is, it, it is something that certainly you can be aware of. And as we move into the final, using some of these pre-made objects, it's not a bad thing. Okay, you're essentially doing the same sort of thing today. I would stick with windows and doors because they're very rectilinear. No cushions, no fluffy stuff, et cetera. We will get to cushions and fluffy stuff, but not yet. So stick with uh, you know, uh, the, the standard stuff. But I at least wanted to point out that these things exist and you can download them. Uh, Flying Architecture is a great source for these kinds of things. Uh, likewise, if you have a specific toilet or something that you want to use, you can download that object. And it really, to use it, would be a, a matter of loading, let's say, a white porcelain. So if we went into our materials. And let me say resources, V-Ray, V-Ray materials, porcelain, let's do a white porcelain. Let me select it, apply material to selection, and lo and behold, we have a great looking toilet. Not too hard, right? It'd be nice if they put the seats on the toilets though, but we can survive. So the point is that those objects exist and by all means use them. Right? There's a reason these companies make them. Um, Kohler happens to be one of the best in terms of actually providing decent stuff to work with. Uh, the OBJ files are really nice. So for today, we're not doing toilets. We're doing windows. But I at least wanted to point those out. Uh, once you're done, there is one other thing that you can do if you want your scene to look a little bit better. Uh, and this is something that's advanced, not required as part of today. But I at least want to point this out because you're starting to get itchy for this sort of thing. And that is that on the website, I've tried to make things as easy as possible. And if you go under, um, let's see where it is. If we go under, it's under tutorials and then V-Ray. The first option that shows up is called V-Ray Quick Rendering Setups. These are scenes that I've already put together for you, essentially. Uh, and you can get through and see a bunch of the scenes and what their settings would be. And you can load a file that will, that will help with those settings. You know what? I should do one that doesn't require any background downloads. Hmm, I'm just trying to think. I'll make one that's, that doesn't require you to download anything special, that has a generic sky to it. But these all exist. So when you're getting to doing your furniture and you want it to look a little better, I'll show you how to load one of these in, and you can have a, a sunset or whatever as part of the backdrop, which will help the glass show up nicely. So I'll do a simpler one, though, that, that doesn't require anything fancy that you guys could load. So today, I want you to go through, and I want you to build an object. Take your time. This should take you the whole class to do. I don't want you rushing through it and running off to do something else. This is about practice. It's also about learning how to take something and you figure out the steps involved in making it, rather than me dictating these are the steps that you go through, you know, 1 through 10. 
And that's part of learning how to work in Rhino and being fluent in Rhino is actually having to make stuff that comes out of your own head. And you'll also find that when I script things for you or when I used to script things for you, there's a lot of different ways of doing it. It just happens to be how I would do it. When you guys are modeling it today, you'll figure out what your own workflow is and how you would go about modeling it. And that's important. And we have to kind of start moving in that direction as the semester goes on. So we're going to build this today. Um, and then we'll, we'll do a few more days of these kinds of builds, um, not specifically doors and windows. We'll get into organic shapes and things that are a little bit harder and a little bit more fun to work with. All right? And that's kind of the trajectory of where we're going. But notice that I did fold back in all the V-Ray stuff. So the texture mapping and stuff still applies today. We learned it last class. You get more practice with it today. All right?